Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab. And today we're taking a deep dive on hybrid mount from QNAP and how it works and its capabilities and all those sorts of things. We've even brought in a special guest that uh, we'll get to here in just a second. And you might look at a, a NAS like this and these 18 terabyte hard drives from Seagate and you get sick amount of capacity in this thing. True. And then you think about cloud and it's like, well, why do cloud if I have 144 terabytes inside of this? Right, so that's kind of the thing. Like you can do your own private setup with this. You don't need cloud services with all the QNAP apps. This is essentially your cloud living in your basement, your small office or whatever. Um, but you still might want to connect this to uh, Box or G Drive or whatever to yeah. either replicate files or consume some of that cloud storage in addition to what you get with a big box like this. The funny thing though is about QNAP is their QTS OS works on all their devices, well, except for the ZFS ones, that's got its own OS, but that means that you can extend all of those services, including cloud or most of them, given the hardware spec, to their smaller NASes. And that's really cool too. When we think about QNAP and we think about NAS, we normally think about guys like this, but some people, can take advantage of a single bay or a two bay NAS and you get the same sort of things. Plus, it's a little shield, I can't see you. You're like Wilson looking over the, well, uh, it's, the fence. Yeah, we can put it on side. Okay, Yeah, I liked it better when it was standing up. It's a pretty nice uh, setup. Um, you don't get a lot of RAM, you don't have a lot of CPU inside of it, but uh, it's an Aperino Labs. And actually, I can read the label right now, so it's an <laughs> AL214 uh, quad core, but you get one gig out and um, it's, pretty competent for a uh, single bay uh, platform. So when we got this in for review, we, we took to Reddit, uh, Home Lab, to go say to those guys, if you had this, what would you do with it? Now, your favorite one was not what we did. No, the uh, highest rated comment, and I think the one that I was initially saying is, um, well, I think it was doorstop, but Door it's... We got doorstop, we got the bludgeoning device, we got all sorts of things, but there were a lot of good ideas too. Yeah, and a lot of it comes down to a single bay NAS uh, really needs to be treated a, a bit different than a uh, multi-bay NAS. You're not gonna yeah. get RAID, you're not gonna get any of the data protection features. So you, I mean, for most use cases, you really wanna go off into the cloud or have backup to another external product. Well, cloud is a great use case for this, and it just seems funny to say, because we often think about cloud as big enterprise storage or whatever, it's not always that, that case. And with hybrid mount from QNAP, it lets you connect into dozens at this point of services from the US to Asia all over the world. And that's pretty cool. So we slammed a terabyte uh, SSD in there just to keep it nice and quiet while we uh, operate with it. And then, as I said, we went to the Great White North. We went yes. to Blaze yes, to get the this land thing of maple done. syrup. He, he gives All us right. maple let's, syrup. Let's bring in this guy. Blaze, how's it going up there? It's going great. Brian, thanks for having me. And so you you remoted in and you were messing around with this little guy. And when we looked at all the different use cases for what to do with one bay, you immediately went to hybrid mount as a good use case. Well, you you got there second. You started with AWS cache, and then we quickly realized that while that's a really neat idea, this little fella doesn't have the RAM uh, required to get that done. So we went to plan three after the doorstop and bludgeoning. So I guess plan four was hybrid mount. Well, unfortunately, the one gig of RAM does hamstring it a little bit, uh, but with the ability to do cloud service mounting, it really redeemed itself in my eyes. Um, yeah. Setting up a uh, setting up the hybrid mount is, is absolutely dead simple. You can have it up and operational in about five minutes. Well, let's, let's get straight into that because I think that show, talking about it and we could talk about the clouds and if you're really curious about the features and functionality that uh, QNAP enables with hybrid mount, they quite literally have a 43 page PDF on their website. You can download it, check it out, and uh, the pink and purple background will, will do wonders for your uh, rods and cones. But after that, you want to go play around with it. It's free to install. You, uh, you, you get this out of their little uh, app repository, right, Blaze? That's uh, you just go into their app center. You download the uh, the hybrid mount utility, then you're greeted with uh, with a screen that uh, that you'll see on on there now. Um, Let's go and, take a look. Yeah. Right. So we've pulled up the uh, the hybrid mount, and now we're taking a look at at what we've got set up. the the uh, The picture there is a tad misleading with four bays, but we'll carry on. 
Well, what uh, the great thing about this is that it not only gives you the ability to do local, uh, or sorry, cloud, it gives you the ability to do local as well. So if you've got other shares on other drives, you can uh, you can map remote devices uh, right through it. Uh, if you've got, you know, let's say subnet traversal or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. it just has that extra function that, uh, available. Uh, so as far as the, the cloud mounting, as, as promised, uh, it really is just easy enough to just click, uh, click add a new device or add a, add a cloud gateway. So you, you click create cloud gateway, you select your service, create cloud share, and we're going to do one drive. So QNAP supports, as we said, a bunch of different services. Um, almost everything's in here. I like Wasabi for big uh, cold data storage because they're inexpensive. Blaze, you're going to go through a OneDrive config for us. Let's get going on that. So I click the OneDrive, and then we have the uh, the dialog that pops up and it prompts us for our login. Right. So that would be the same step for any of those services to get your credentials. Right. Yep. So it, it It'll ask me uh, what permissions. So it's just pretty standard. Uh, it wants uh, it wants read write permissions to the share. So we go ahead and we grant that permission. And there it is. Okay. So then it just gives us uh, an option that we can we can share single folder, multiple folders. I just leave it on all folders. Uh, and but next. And last is where we want to locate the uh, the share. So we'll give it, let's say, uh, let's say if the OneDrive account that you're only sharing is uh, is only, let's say, I don't know, 15 gigs, then uh, then we just create a volume that uh, that's respective to the size of the the share that uh, that you have, and go ahead and create it. Uh oh, we ran out of space. Oh, uh, the minimum. Oh, it, it was the minimum. So let's give, let's give it one. Yes, don't use this as small accounts. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Yeah, it, that's that's not worth worth doing. The uh, the one terabyte that you get with your uh, with your family plan uh, on Microsoft Office three hundred and sixty mounts very well with this too. I've done uh, I've done some testing on my personal side, and it it's great. Look at that. Those people are so happy they can get all their files now from OneDrive on their NAS. Or their files yeah. being taken away into the cloud. <laughs> Both. Uh, so we just set up the OneDrive account. You can go through this and what do you get for the the uh, no cost license? You get two cloud services. Is that right? You do. Yeah. So we can go ahead and we can actually, if we wanted to, just zip through and select uh, Dropbox. Sure. Pops up. It asks you authenticate. And away you go. It's the same sort of so deal. The same You're online almost in the same thing. Right. Yep. And so this would be the we same with Amazon or Wasabi or yep. you know, Box or any of these services. And I think what's pretty cool is once you get these set up, the ability to um, bounce the the data between multiple clouds, yeah. which is kind of a nice thing if you're worried about one cloud being there, one cloud not, or and it's uh, designed for home users. Which, by the way, a lot of people are going to be jumping between deals, so there might be some like, hey, well, one, that's true. There's they, a trial on this service. I'm going to try this one, then move it over when the trial ends. Yeah. So with the economics of the cloud always changing, always moving, this gives you the ability to be super dynamic and and move that data. Uh, around if you need, or if you just want two copies or whatever. Yeah. The other thing that's really cool that I like is the ability to cache the cloud on your NAS. And so that's pretty neat too. Um, Blaze, I've, I've put us back into the hybrid mountain view. So why, why don't you show us what you what else you enjoy here? So if we wanted to have, let's say, uh, group level access to, to these shares, they're now fully available uh, right in in the file station, you can assign share privileges, uh, and it all appears just right here in as as though it was another device that's attached directly. So right. you know, if you if you let's say you've got a lot of uh, of media consumption and you're uh, working with those Linux ISOs, then you you know you can just select the entire folder and you can copy the uh, the Linux ISO folders and you can just drag it right over to your your Dropbox. Or your your OneDrive, mm -hmm. and away you go. It just it'll kick off a task, and it will take care of uh, pretty much everything, right from uh, 
though, right? From from a local standpoint. Well, that from a usability standpoint, being able to just kind of you know, you right click, but drag and drop more or less between the devices. And you could do that if you had um, other volumes, if you had uh, like a USB drive attached to this thing, it all yeah. shows up and is managed through that same interface. That's pretty cool. Exactly. Yeah. What else do you uh, like about your hybrid mount experience so far? Well, I find that it's, it's nice to be able to have uh, more users in in a business environment um, having access and being able to update the files so rather than if you're a small business you're working from home uh, and you're trying to try to deal with a lot of information that's uh, that's coming through with, uh, with maybe working with four or five different people across the country uh, all the changes and everything are, are live everything is is done pretty much in in real time mm -hmm. that uh, that you can Take your file, make your your changes, upload it, and those changes are automatically pushed or propagated to all other instances of that. My my experience with this, yeah. and, and truly enjoying uh, being able to have uh, cloud synchronization locally without having to have it tied into a computer that it can just sit and and do everything completely in the background. So it's wonderful for teams. You know, you're working from home, you're dealing with a lot of uh, a lot of data that that may be flying back and forth. You don't have to worry about uh, you know, making sure that your laptop is uh, is charged, powered on. You can just have complete access to a shared repository locally at a really low cost. That gives you uh, gives you pretty much everything that you you need to, to copy between. You know, let's say OneDrive, Dropbox. Uh, you know, you were saying Wasabi. Mm -hmm. uh, it supports Box. Well, I mean. You do get the two licenses out of the box uh, with with the QNAP, um, but you also have the ability to purchase uh, additional licenses directly from QNAP and expand that out really until the the limits of of your hardware. They don't, which is uh, which is pretty cool because we're dealing with a one bay NAS for yeah know, a, a pretty low entry point of, of you know well below two hundred bucks and. To be able to extend it to the cloud to two services for free, obviously, you have to pay for the cloud service is pretty cool, and then the um, the ability to just buy a little license. I think it's twenty bucks to add more services if you want, and that's that's pretty neat too. Absolutely. So on that front, uh, QNAP's been kind enough to give us uh, access to three licenses to enable the. Uh, uh, the full subscription yeah, to really this. Generous of them. Yeah, we're going to give those away to our our watchers, listeners. So if you've got a QNAP, if you want a license, go ahead and hit us on our socials, tag us on any of them, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, maybe even Reddit. Did I miss any? Yeah, Reddit. I mean, that's still a social platform. You can email Kevin directly with your entry. Just no, send, just, don't email me. Just send us a, a photo or post a photo of your QNAP just so we can see proof of life. And we'll select uh, three winners at random. Anywhere in the world, this will work. Uh, we will select them um, on, what day is today? Friday. Friday. We'll pick them out on, on Monday to start the week off right with some free hybrid mount licenses. So uh, hit us up on socials. But until then, I mean, this is just another great way to take a single bay NAS, expand it to the cloud, makes it so much more functional. Um, and you could slam this uh, in a small office. You could use it at home. You could get a lot of mileage out of single bay NAS. So don't sleep on that as a concept. Uh, you just have to uh, use these additional tools uh, from QNAP or you know, whoever your favorite NAS vendor is to be able to take advantage of a single bay NAS and, and use it for all it's worth. So thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. Bye-bye.